How are we doing, everyone? It's been a couple of weeks since you really heard from me. I've been wiped out over the festive period. COVID got me after Christmas, over Christmas, sorry. Then after Christmas, I got some sort of long COVID. Last couple of weeks, I've been wiped out. I apologize for that. Haven't done many videos. And I've, <laughs> I've been missing it. And I haven't missed watching United play, though. If I'm being completely honest, because of how we're playing at the moment. And everything that's kicking off right now with all the players rebelling, 17 players frustrated and angry under Ragnik. I haven't really had my say on that whole situation. Uh, it's been quite annoying to watch it from the sidelines. What I'm going to do in this video, I'm going to run through Ever's comments. Ever released like a four and a half minute video on Instagram yesterday. If you haven't seen it, it's gonna, I'll bring it on to the channel now. I'm going to react to it. I'm going to look at the points that Ever raises. Because Ever might be, he's a bit of a madhead, isn't he? You know, anybody who sits there and chews on a raw chicken. Kind of got a screw loose, but Ever's got a connection to Manchester United that I think goes deeper than most. Everything that went on with Suarez and the clubs supporting and standing by him the whole time, and the fan base supporting and standing by him the whole time, I feel like he's got a connection that's a little bit deeper than most players. That's why I do listen to what Ever has to say. And I want to, as I said, run through his reaction on this whole situation, on everything that's going on around Manchester United at the moment with the fan base, the negativity, and the players. And the negativity and the frustrations. And I want to hear his comments on it and react to it. So please, if you would consider dropping a like on the video by the end of it. If you did enjoy it, subscribe to United People's TV. Let's run through this video from Patrice Evra. Hey guys, I just want to say a few words, you know, because I had enough every time I see a United fan. I have to say sorry, sorry, sorry. And I feel sorry, of course. But I think... We, we have to stay positive. I know people hear the same speech every single year, every time it's the same, it's the same circus. But I just, I had enough also about that negative energy around the club and people, they're not even in the club talking about United. You know, it hurt me so much. So even for myself, you know, I'm in pain, I'm bleeding like you guys, but I think I want us to stay positive, you know, because you wanted to sack Ole. Uh, you were like pushing, pressing, like even me, people were like, hashtag Ole out, Ole out. And you know what, what makes me sad is Ole is being judged only in his last two weeks. But people forget what he has done before. And he bring hope. He bring back hope to this club. Now, look, he gets on to speaking about the players and what's currently going on. But yeah, that, that point there about Ole... You know my whole situ my whole stance on Ole. I support him the whole way through because, yeah, he did return an element of belief and an element of hope to Manchester United that I didn't think had been there before. And you know what's crazy? I remember saying this on camera quite a lot. I felt like there was a likability inside this squad that hadn't been there for a long time. And look what's unraveled now in the last three, four weeks that's made me... It's blown my mind, really. I think it's a fucking disgrace. And they can all just get out of the club, as far as I'm concerned. I don't see the, the point in pussyfooting around this conversation anymore. Because through... I understood, kind of going a bit off-piste here, because I'm not running through every video. This is my own opinion and comment. But under Mourinho, I understood if the players clashed with him. And... Everything that went on with Pogba and Mourinho at that point, you saw you know, Mourinho is a siege mentality monster. When it works, it works. When it doesn't, it all unravels. And at that point, you, you saw it was very easy to have empathy with the players. And then we went to Ole Gunnar Solskjaer and we went the complete opposite to a man who was an arm around the shoulder manager. And if we're being completely honest, now that we can look back on it, maybe he was too nice and he allowed players to be too comfortable. So that when Ralph Radnick came into the situation as manager, he found a lot of entitled players who wanted it their way, who didn't want to go home when it was dark, who didn't want to do double training sessions, who didn't want to run around in an intense pressing style. Fuck them all, man. They are supposed to be the elite, the top of the top. The amount of footballers that are in the UK that make it to become a Premier League football Footballers, it's got to be less than 1%. It's what every kid's dream is. And now that these people are in this position and playing for Manchester United as well, they still want it their way. And they've had it their way for a long time at Manchester United. And that's why I completely stand in support of Ralph Randick and everything that he's doing. 
it's about time that we wipe this cult you're talking about the cultural reset it's still there i think Solskjaer did do some good but i think he added to that player power that's that's existed at manchester united ever since fergie left it was always something that he held as one of his the biggest pillars of of importance at manchester united is making sure nobody was bigger than the club or bigger than the manager why stam left van Nistelrooy. Why Bruno nearly left. Beckham, Keane, Ronaldo. Why well, he wanted? He, that's a bit different, I suppose. But something that Fergie held is such an important aspect, and we've lost that completely. And it's allowed this culture to take over. As I said, I went a bit off piece there. Let's go back to what Everett's saying because he does raise some good points, and that's why I wanted to run through this video. And everyone can agree with me with that. Then anyway, now we have a new manager, right, Nick? We have to stay strong behind him. He come with a new philosophy, with new method. People have to adapt, so you have to give time. He's not a magician, and I say that from the beginning, and people were saying I'm against Reinick. No, I'm not against him. I'm for every people, they, they work for this club. I'm going to support them and going to die for them. So let's be clear. What I was going to say, guys, because I don't want you to cry now, because I knew no matter anyone come, it's gonna be tough. I think we all knew it was going to be tough. A question I want to ask you in the comments here now, right? Ever there. As I said, Ever is a, a player that when, when you listen to him, sometimes you feel like you can't take him too seriously. He speaks a lot, it cliches a lot. He loves this game. But how many of these players would actually, obviously no one's actually literally going to die for the badge, but how, how many of these players inside this squad do you feel had that sort of affiliation to Manchester United to wearing that badge? that badge on their chest there they genuinely don't give a fuck about it and of course the the concept of loyalty the concept of, of that affiliation to a club it's been diminished uh over in recent years last 10 15 years that sort of it's slowly gone down so i'm not here under any illusion that i i should expect every single player to just love manchester united to bleed manchester united of course not but still some of them should give a fuck and that's why that performance from phil jones and the emotion from Phil Jones after that game against Wolves hit home so hard. Phil Jones there holding back the tears when he was walking past the Stretford and it's not because he's just walking past the Stretford and he's walking. He's had like a couple of years of real personal, mental and physical torture to get to that point where he's back playing professional football again, which is what he wants to do. But just to see that sort of committed level of performance from Phil Jones compared to everybody else, just embarrassed every single other player on that pitch apart from David De Gea maybe Raphael Varane in that game in particular against Wolves just don't see that from this Manchester United squad and we're hearing talks of cliques appearing as I said I'm gonna I'll save this bit for when Patrice ever speaks about it but the point there he raises about players dying for the shirt I'm not sure you could say that about many of this current United squad could you let's go back to what Patrice is saying and he come with a different method so people have to adapt so give him time I just want also United to don't rush any decision for the next manager because it's why you have to rush it take your time the players that's your responsibility now you sack Ole he's a new manager you know there's no excuse something is wrong we are something is wrong and this is the point i've been waiting to hear that this, this, this is the most important point of the video we have to bleed for this club we have to die for this club for those people we support you whatever whatever like good result bad result we need to be behind the club now richard arnold is gonna have like massive decision to make he's going to to he, he will have to appoint his first manager and you have to take your time but i don't want now people to start to say oh we are this we are that you know trust the process i know it's many years we're asking you to trust the process but trust the process look at liverpool they wait 30 years before they win the league again trust the process kind of a sentence that yeah we've been fed quite a lot and we have trusted the process uh I don't trust this squad. I do I do not trust this squad. I don't trust them to I trust Ragnick. I trust Ralph Ragnick to be the man who comes into and that's why that that's what gives me a bit of a, a bit of hope really. 
the fact that Ralph's not only here for a six month consultancy role. Sorry, a six month uh, managerial position. He's going into a, a consultancy role for two years. And by the way, Ed Woodward's leaving in June 2022. Ed Woodward will have nothing to do with the new manager. He's going to be the first manager post Woodward. And that's a real feeling of hope for me because Richard Arnold has already said that he's going to step away from the footballing side of things and allow a bit more autonomy. So that's where Ralph Rannick is going to step up. And it's going to be a split role, hopefully, between Richard Arnold concentrating on the business side, which has massively stagnated in the last six years, and therefore Ralph Radnick taking a bit more control of the footballing side. And I, as I said, I've said this before, I wouldn't be surprised if it gets formalised into a director of football role. Uh, maybe that will clash with John Murto. I don't know. But yeah, trust the process. You can only say that so far, but from the summer, whoever comes in, whether it's Eric Ten Hag, I hope it's Eric Ten Hag, and with Ralph Rannick upstairs and Woodward gone, the club overall structure is going to be in the best possible position that we've been in in a long, long time. But the players have to have to deliver. They have to deliver. You know what's frustrating the, the fan? It's because we got the player. But instead of talking about the manager, let's talk about the player. Hell yeah. You are at United. Do you understand? Oh, lucky you are to play for this club. So show that, show that to us. Show that to us, please. That's what we are waiting for. Let's That's all that United fans are waiting for. And it's the, the reason I paused it there is because the next point that Patrice ever says is the most important point that he raises in this whole video. Stop talking about what's happening, you know, with the club, the player. We ask you to perform. That's United. If you 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 are uh, you don't like when people criticize you because you do a bad game, then leave the club. Leave, man. Just get the fuck out. There is nothing else that needs to be said anymore. And Patrice Evers deadpan right there. I like that. It's good. To, good. Good point to pause the video. Simple as that, man. Like every fan is entitled to criticize when players aren't performing properly. If I was in a position, if I was in a public role if, if my my job was a, a public role so i am you, you <laughs> and you do everybody tells me when i make mistakes in videos everybody tells me if i make a shit video and i listen to them and i try to improve my videos i try to improve what i'm doing the players had to expect the same sort of no it, it, it scrutiny is when you're paid that much the reality is the scrutiny that comes with it is increased tenfold as well if your wages are 10 times higher the scrutiny that's going to go with that job is 10 times higher and when you see the first 30, 40 minutes against Crystal Palace, I know this 4 triple 2 system isn't working completely right now. There are flaws, there are holes, there are tactical problems that Ralph Randick needs to solve. But the bigger issue is about the players. Because that first 30, 40 minutes after one training session against Crystal Palace, that system worked. You know why it worked? Because the players actually put the effort in. The players applied themselves. And therefore it worked. And ever since... It's not worked. Lo and behold, it's because the players aren't applying themselves. And everybody can leave, man. Everybody can get the fuck out of Manchester United. We will move on as a football club. I don't want players. That's why I said I'm done with Paul Popper, man. I can't be asked. I don't care about you. Just, you sign the contract. You want to stay? I'll support you. You don't want to? I'm done. I'm done. Vamos, go. We'll replace you. Jesse Lingard, you don't want to sign a deal? Fine, man. You've been at the club since you've been a young kid. you come the whole way through. I wish you the best, but get the fuck out. Move on. See you later. Anthony Martial, you don't want to play for us? Eh, get, leave. Get the fuck out. I will replace you with somebody else. I'm done, and the club should be done with these players. But it's not about keeping a big squad and X, Y, Z. Get rid of them in January. Get rid of as many of these voices as possible, because the more of these voices that exist, the harder Ralph Ragnick's job is. Jesse Lingard might be able to be a good substitute and come on and score a couple of important goals from the bench Cool, but he'll also maybe be speaking in the ears of players in the dressing room at training, saying he's unhappy, speaking about moving away. They're not the voices that's going to help unify a dressing room and help a team become, help a squad become a team under Ralph Ragnick. And that's what we're not at the moment. So I'm just done with it. Absolutely, unequivocally done with it. And done with these entitled players running through managers and somehow not getting the blame when it's really ultimately their fault. Continue what Patrice has to say. Then leave the club. But this is United. 
And when I speak about United DNA, let me explain to people what I'm talking when I say United DNA. It's winning mentality, so it's winning trophy. It's trying to win the league every year. And he's like dying on the pitch, like run, just run. Like my passion people say, ah, but you know, now it's more about tactic. Yes, but the passion, the fighting spirit, this is the United DNA. I wouldn't say, I mean, of course it's United DNA, but, but it's the basic, utter basic requirements of, of an elite level athlete. It's not just the United way, the United DNA. It's like, you should run, go and fucking run. All you do all week is train to run, go and run. How are you not covering the ground? How are you second to every ball? It's about attitude. It's about application. It's about dive, dive for the shirt. However you want to describe it. Because the players don't give a fuck. <clears throat> and now the veil has slipped. It's like, you can't... As I said, I, I had empathy with the players under Mourinho. Then Solskjaer came in and gave them everything they wanted to be. Like a nice warm bed, a duvet, a little cuddle, a little bedtime story. Everything you could possibly want. And still, they didn't apply themselves. But at that point, I kind of empathised with the fact that Solskjaer, I believe, I understood that he was tactically a little bit short of the elite. So then Ralph Randick comes in. A man who's tactically a professor. Somebody who Klopp has learned from. Tuchel has learned from. The godfather of Gegenpressen. You wanted a tactical genius. Here's your man. Then what are you doing? You're not putting the work in. So fuck the players at this point. As I said, empathy about Mourinho, empathy about Solskjaer and both of their flaws. But Rannick is a man who deserves and demands respect and effort. And he's not getting either of them from, from many of these players. And I'm completely in support of Rannick right now. And the players are just, fuck them all, really. Fuck them all. Even when you lose the game, but you give everything on the pitch, the fan, they will applaud you. But that's not what's happening right now. So let's be honest with ourselves. Let's fight for this badge and respect the people. They come and they, some people, they even do mortgage to come to watch the game. And that was my philosophy when I was playing. We don't play for the fame. We don't play for the money. We play for making people happy. And we're passionate about the game. So I'm, I'm having a good time. It's difficult for me to not talk about United. But you have to stop talking just in a negative way about United. I love you all and United forever. You know it's serious when he doesn't sign off with I love this game. As I said, Patrice Ever is a man who a lot of the time he speaks in cliches, but it all comes from the right place with Patrice Ever. It really, really does. And... That attitude is what is missing inside that dressing room. It, it, it's, it's not the attitude of, ah, oh, we're just playing to make fans happy. Come on, we're not, we're not fucking stupid, man. You're playing because you're getting millions of pounds a week. Well, not a week, but you're getting rich. Cool. But you've, you're, you're a Premier League footballer. That's just, that's just is what it is. You know, that's, you deserve that. You're a top level athlete. But we as fans deserve the sort of committed performances that we should, you should expect and you see. All around the Premier League, at other teams. Why not at Manchester United? Now, I know that there are things wrong with the club. I know that there are plenty of things wrong with the Glazers. There is absolutely no excuses for the sort of entitled approach that so many of these Manchester United players seem to have right now. They genuinely think that they are the most important thing in the entire world. And that's it. They want to make sure that they get home to see. I don't know, see the one show. Make sure they can tuck, they, they, they can do what they want. Not the most important thing. They are contracted as Manchester United players and they need to play like Manchester United players. And the reason that everything that's happening right now is made, what's making it so much worse is because we've, we've experienced the best of it before. Under Fergie, for, we, we were gifted with 10, 20 years of the best football we'll ever watch. And so that's what makes this so much harder. And Patrice Evra was part of that team. Too. I would probably say it's the best team we've had in the Premier League. That 2007-2009 team was unreal. <clears throat> you think they would have won the Champions League, the Premier League double, if they weren't committed every single game, if they put these sorts of performances? Nah, 
Not a chance. And Fergie would never have let it happen. So yeah, I want to know what your opinion on everything because we haven't had a chance to speak about it yet. As I said, I've been... I mean, this cough has been horrendous. Honestly, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going to preach about vaccinations. I'm not going to preach about COVID, but I've had COVID. I know I've had it twice. I think I've had it three times. And it's, it's not me for six this time. It really has over Christmas. I've been weak, tired. Cough has been insane. I tried to do a live stream once and I couldn't. I literally had to stop. I'd encourage you to get your vaccinations. And I really want to encourage you to let me know what you think about the Patrice Ever video in the comments below. I want you to let me know what you think about the, everything that's going on with Manchester United at the moment. Hope, oh, I should be back to normal on Monday onwards, fingers crossed. Uh, maybe I could do a couple of live streams over the weekend. I'm not sure. But please let me know what you think about everything that's going on with Ragnick, with the players, with Manchester United at the moment. And please let me know what you think about Everest comments. Because I think, as I said, I think he raises a lot of good points that we should discuss in the comments. Take it easy, everyone.